tributes, and the first one is going to be um, tributes on behalf of Maury Ricketts, his sister. Um, so this is going to be the big Lavinia and Sarah Ricketts. And then that's going to be followed by um, Natalia Bucan.
Paul just got on with his life and worked with what he had. He never, I never heard him complain or murmur about anything. He used one word, which I often work on. He would often say, when I asked how he was, he said, I'm all right. Even uh, two days when I saw him in the hospital before he went, I said, how are you, brother? I'm okay, I'm all right. He would say, I'm all right, even when he was in pain. You know, I was, as I was writing this, I was thinking, if you ask some people how they are, they say, oh, my back. Oh, my head hurts in me. Oh, I feel terrible today. But never my brother, he will always say, I'm all right. So when he had this stroke some years ago, he spent more time at home in peaceful habitation, but he had his music, which kept him going. He loved Bob Marley music. I guess in one word he would say, um, the words, famous words of Bob Marley, don't worry about a thing, because every little thing is going to be all right. Don't worry. But we know that in this life, we know without God, it's only Him that helps us through the trials, the tribulations, and pain. So indeed, when we have Christ, we can say, don't worry, because every little thing will be all right. Do you know why? Because He gives strength for every situation. And we thank God for the life of my brother Tash. I've got a little poem I'm going to read. It's about friendship, but I want to just, you know, change that word friendship to brother. Friendship is a golden chain. The links of friends are so dear. And like a rare and precious jewel, it is treasured more each year. It's clasped together firmly with a love that's deep and true. And it's rich with very, with happy memories and fun recollection too. Time can't destroy its beauty. For if for as long as memory lives, years can't raise its pleasure, the pleasure. The joy of friendship gives, gives the, the joy that friendship gives. For friendship is a priceless gift that can't be bought or sold. But to have an understanding friend is worth far more than gold. And the golden chains of friendship is a strong and blessed time, binding kindred hearts together as the years go passing by. I just want to, you know, dedicate that to many of my brother. You know, precious jewel he was, and we thank God for his love.
cross in the cross, be my glory ever till my righteous soul shall find rest beyond the rivers. Thank God that he is, um, he is the faithful person that can keep us near to his cross. So at this time we're opening it up for anyone who would like to give a tribute to any friends, anyone who would like to give a tribute for the next 10 minutes is open for open tribute. So whoever wants to come, please come and don't take, you know, we don't want a full life story, just make it short and sweet. All right, God bless you, who's gonna be first?
to uh, come up and represent my cousin Ferdy, who couldn't make it today. He sends his love, his wishes to the family, and I know that he would like to make, leave a message about his cousin. So he grew up with as a child in Jamaica, and I'm sure as children they had one or two moments that they shouldn't have, running up and down the yard and doing various things. But he's, I know he would have wanted to be here today, and I know he would want to give him a tribute today. So I wanted just to represent him and those of members of our family who just couldn't travel to this one thing or other. But I want to just give a message from them this evening, this morning. So there's something to look forward to, and that is 
if you're in Jesus Christ, you've got a new home to look forward. So the, the troubles, the trials, the pain, the sickness, whatever it is that happens to us as we go along in this day, daily life, it will soon all be over. And that's the consolation that we have at this time. Okay, my sister's going to come.
So I know that he has been a, a pillar in this community, he's been here for many, many years. Um, but one of the things I want to encourage us to, to think about today, um, as I always do, every time I go to a funeral and every time I do um, a funeral service, it always causes me to think about my own mortality uh, and my own life and realistically to think, you know, what will I be doing when that time comes? And where will I be? Where will I be? Will I, will I be well? Will I be sick? Um, would I have said everything I needed to say to the people that I love? Because one of the things about death, when it comes, that's it. Whatever you wanted to do, you can't do. Whatever you were planning to do, it all comes to an end, because that is the end. And the Bible tells us in um, Hebrews, it says, it, it says, Hebrews 9, 27, it says, it's appointed unto man once to die, but after death comes the judgment. And so it's important for us to make a decision about then what we do with our life in the time that we are here. Because that has a significant impact on the life to come. And some people will tell you that when you die, that's just it and it's all over. But if you read the Bible and if you believe the Bible, you know that there's something after death. And it depends on how you die in this life that's going to make an impact on what happens after and so it's important then for us to have a relationship with Jesus Christ and to know him for ourselves. Because life is so unpredictable. You know, we're here today and tomorrow we're gone. There's some people um, that I know, you know, I've spoken to them like two days and the next two days they've passed away. And the thing about it is you don't have to, you don't have to be whole, you can be young. It don't matter what colour you are, it don't matter where you come from, death comes to all of us at some point. And I'm not saying this to, to scare us or anything, but that is the reality. That we can be here today, and next week, and a year from now, a month from now, a day from now, we could be gone. We don't have any control of that. That is the life cycle. And we read before that in, there is a season for everything. There is, there is a time that's been allocated to every single one of us. And when that time is up, it is up. I'm, I'm reminded of a story that I heard uh, many years, of, years ago about this man who had seen, you know, all of his, his friends passing away. And he knew that at some point, you know, death was going to be coming um, to him. And he was trying to make preparation to say, you know, I want to be ready when it comes. But the day he was at home one day, a knock came at the door and, he, and it was Mr. Death that came to his door. And he opened the door and he said to, to Death, he said, ah, oh, Mr. Death, I knew he was coming at some point. I just didn't know when. He said, oh, come in, come and have a seat, take it easy with me. And he allowed Death to come in and sit down. And he offered Death a drink. He said, do you want a drink? He said, yes, I'll have a drink. He has a drink. And this man decided within himself, he said, I'm going to treat Death so nicely. So he said, do you need something to eat? Death said, yes, yeah, I have something to eat. He goes, okay. And he prepared him a really nice meal. And Death sat down and he had this meal. And he felt very comfortable to the point where he got a bit tired and he fell asleep. And during the time while Death was sleeping, the man goes over and he looks at the list that his Death has. And, he, and in fact, he sees that his name is at the top of this list. And whilst Death was sleeping, he goes ahead and he, he rubs his name off the top of that list. And he writes it on the bottom of the list. And he said, you know what, I'm going to see what happens now. So now the death wakes up a couple of hours later and the death says, my goodness, you know what? You've taken so good care of me. You've looked after me so well. He says, when I'm on these assignments, you know, I, I get my list of people that I normally have to go to and I follow my list. He said, well, you've been so good to me today. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna change the, the process of what I normally do. I normally start from the top of my list. But he said, well, today I'm gonna, I'm gonna start from the bottom of the list. <laughs> The moral of the story is you can't keep death. It comes to every single one of us. And so the important thing is how we die. What we do with the life that we are living here and now. And it's not just about having good morals, being good to people, giving charity and all of that. All of those things are good. But if you don't know Jesus, then you're going to miss out. The Bible tells us that it's appointed unto man wants to die. After death 
comes to judgment, there is going to be a time of reckoning about what we do in this life. And Bible says also that all of us have sinned, Romans 3.23, and we've fallen short of the glory of God. So none of us were, were born perfect, none of us were born righteous, we were all born in sin. But the, the other scripture says, but the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Can you imagine going out to work, working every day and expecting to get paid, but the payment that you get is death? Is your life being taken? That's what the scripture says. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. And so Jesus Christ, when he came to this earth, he came so that we might have life. He died for us. And if you were the only person in this old wild world today, Jesus Christ still would have come and he still would have died for you. Why? Because he loves you. Because he cares about you. And it's not a love that you're going to do anything for. He already loves you. Even the person that we may consider to be the worst person may have committed the, the worst crime ever. Jesus loves that individual. The Bible says that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So we didn't have to do anything special for him to come and die for us. He already loved you with an everlasting love. And that's why he died for you. So in terms of us turning our lives to Christ, we just have to allow him to come in. We just have to ask him to come in. It's not no long prayer. It's not no uh, particular ritual that you have to go through. Some people say, oh, I've got to go to the Father and the Father's got to bless me. It's none of that. It's just you being honest with yourself and being honest with God and speaking to him and asking him to come into your life. There are so many things that people do in our lives. I was reading the Bible the other day and I was reading about Solomon. And the word tells us about Solomon that he was one of the, 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 the wisest kings um, in, in Bible times. And he was also one of the richest kings. When he came to the throne and Solomon prayed and asked God to give him wisdom so that he could know how to rule the kingdom. And in doing that, God said to Solomon, you know, because you've not asked for riches or anything else, I'm going to give you riches. So Solomon was blessed tremendously. He had favor. If it was in our time, he would have the, the, the best house. He would, he would have the most money. He had everything. God blessed him abundantly. And so Solomon is looking at his life. And as we read in Ecclesiastic, he's looking at his life and everything that he's accomplished. And the word of God tells us, he said, he said, I made me great houses. He said, I planted me great vineyards. He said, I have orchids, I have the best trees of all different kinds of fruits. He said, I made me pools of water. He said, I also had me servants, I had maidens that were born in my house. He said, I have great possessions, great and small. He said, I have the cattle, I have everything that I needed while I lived here in Jerusalem. He said, I also gathered me the silver and the gold and all of the peculiar treasures I had there. He said, I got me singers, male singers, female singers, to my heart's delight. He said, I had the best musicians from every, every area. I had those musicians. He said, and so I was great. He said, and I increased more than any person who was before me. And he also said, my wisdom remained with me. What he was saying there is that even though he had the money and everything, he didn't become stupid. You know, there's some people that have the wealth and they don't even know what to do with the money. Solomon said, I had the money, but I didn't become stupid. I, I used my intellect to do the best that I could to attain everything that I, I needed. And so in verse 19 of chapter 2, he said, what, Whatsoever my eyes desired, I didn't keep it from myself. He said, I withheld nothing. You talk about women. The Bible says Solomon, he had 700 women, 300 concubines. He said, I didn't owe back nothing. Anything that I wanted, I went after it and I got it because I was able to do so. And then it comes down to, he said, but when I looked at the works of my hands, he said, when I looked at everything that I have achieved, all the things that I have accomplished, every place that I have been, all the wealth that I have, he said, I looked at it and it was all vanity. He said it was meaningless and vexation of spirit. He said there was no profit under the sun. 
And then he comes to a conclusion. He said in verse 13, he said, let's hear the conclusion of the whole matter. He says, fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. He says, for God shall bring every work into judgment and every secret thing, whether it's been good or whether it's been evil. And so I want to say to us today, it's not about um, having a pauper life or living in any particular way. You can do whatever you want to do. You can have the best of whatever you want to have. But the important thing is that you need to know Jesus. Because if you haven't got him at the end of the day, you're going to lose out. And this is the conclusion that Solomon came to. With everything that he had achieved, he said the whole conclusion of the matter is we need to fear God and we need to keep his commandments. And so I want to say to you today, as you sit here and as we reflect, and some of us are sorrowful and some of us are thinking and our memories are going back to the relationship that we had with Tash and the times that you may have smiled and, and, and ha had something to hear and talked with. But he's no longer here. He is gone. Whatever he has done in his life, it has ceased. It has come to an end. So it, it's important that if you don't die in Christ, there is no hope. And this is what I want to leave with you today, to think about your own mortality. Think about your own life as you live it. You may be young, you may be holy, it doesn't really matter. What matters is your relationship with Jesus Christ. And just as how we would take out the insurance policies so that if somebody breaks in our house, we can replace it. If something happens to our cars, we can, we can get a new car. We, we, we take out insurance for, for safety, something that we can fall back on. Let me tell you, you need somebody to fall back on. Because there will come a time when your friends, your family, the closest person can't help you but Jesus. He can help you today. So I want to leave this with you as we pray with you because I don't want to see anybody lost. That's not what Jesus came. He said he came to seek and to save that which was lost. So he loves us. I don't know if you've ever been loved in here today, but that love that you have experienced, God's love is greater. It is deeper. It will touch the untouchable. He will reach the unreachable. He will go to the furthest part of the world just to find you because he loved you. And as I said before, if you were the only person in this whole wide world, he still will have come and died. So the scripture says, so God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Whosoever believes in him shall have everlasting life. He loves you today. He cares about you today. And all it needs is for you to make that decision to say, you know what, I'm going to think about this. I'm going to talk to God for myself. You're not going to come to confess to me or whatever. I have to go to God and confess my own sins. But you talk to him and he's the one that will forgive you. So God bless you today. And family, we continue to pray for you and with you. This is, yes, a difficult time, but we know that God is our comfort. God is our strength. And he will strengthen us and he will keep us. So we're going to stand at this time and I'm going to pray and then we're going to give the chance. Okay, so we're going to give the chance for us to do um, to pay your final respects after we pray this time for those who want to do so. So stand with me and bow your heads at this time as we pray. And if you're here today, if you need a special prayer, you just need to just stick your hand up. We will pray for you because I know God is touching somebody today. God is here with us. And if there's something that you may want God to do, you just have to believe he is able. So let's just bow our heads. And if you need a prayer, just stick your hands up. You don't need to look at anybody else. It's just about you and God. Just stick your hands up. We will pray for God to have his way. Thank you. I can see your hands. We will pray. God will listen to you. Thank you. I can see those hands. Thank you. In Jesus' name, thank you. God bless you. Lord Jesus, we look to you at this time, giving you the glory, the honor, and the praise. We thank you for this opportunity, God, for your people in this community, God, that can come together on this special.
special day of celebration and farewell as we say goodbye to Tash. We thank you, God, for his life. We thank you, God, for the legacy, Lord, that he has left behind. And we pray, my God, that you will just touch your people right now. I pray, God, for every single hand that was lifted for crying today. Oh, God, you know what the needs are. You know what the situation is, why they raise their hands. And I pray in the name of Jesus that you will touch them right now, that you will minister to them whatever the circumstances are, whatever they may need in their life at this point. I pray in the name of Jesus, God, that you will touch them. Oh, Father, if they need healing in their bodies, we pray for healing right now in the name of Jesus. If it's strength, God, if it's to make a decision, whatever the situation is, we give it to you right now in your precious name. And Father, we put the family before you again. For you are a God of comfort. You are a God of strength. You are the God that keeps us. I pray your covering. I pray your keeping. I pray your strength for the days ahead, my God, when the memories flood in, when the tears come. We pray, God, that you will be with them. You will be their strength strength and you will be their comfort and right now Lord I just commit every single person in this place into your hands be our guide and be our protector even as we leave this building Father to go to the cemetery we pray for journey and mercies that you will protect us that you will keep us oh God that we will reach our destination safely I give every single person here into your hands I commit them to you God for your blessing and for your favor we commit them to you right now in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Uh, we're going to have some music playing and we're going to give the opportunity for those who would want to pay your respects and come and fire pass. Um, and if we try to do this orderly, there's quite a few um, people in the building. So if we start from this far side, and we're going to ask you to come, come down that way, come across, and then you can exit. All right, and we'll do that far side first, then this side, then this side, then this side, and then the family will have a few moments at the end. So you're going to go down to the back, come across, come down, and, and go across. Please, you will see the family at the, at the repass later, so don't spend all the time um, spending at, at the front of the family. We've got some wheelchairs here, so we don't want to congregate at the front too tall. Um, you can speak to people a bit later, all right? So if you're coming, just come quickly. We'll do that, and then we're going to exit the building. God bless you. Please.